Good day. We'll discuss now Chapter 2, Data Management. And when we talk about data, we always talk about statistics. So what is statistics? Now in its plural sense, it is just a numerical data. While in its singular sense, it refers to the scientific discipline consisting of theories and methods in processing numerical information that one can use when making decisions in the face of uncertainty. So we can use statistics in making some decisions out of some data. And others define statistics as the art and science of collecting, presenting, analyzing, and interpreting data. Now we have some applications of statistics. So we have this. You can use statistics in analyzing and organizing some data. And we have some research claims also. Because statistics is also used in proving your claims or in testing whether your claims are true or not. So statistics is very useful in research because we have many statistical tools that are used in answering the claims of some researchers. So now we have two areas of statistics. First is the descriptive statistics. So by the word itself, descriptive, it will just give us a short description of your data. And as well as, it is also the methods concerned with collecting, describing, and analyzing a set of data without drawing conclusions or, inference or inferences about a large group. So in this case, you'll just have to make a, an interpretation based on your data collected. So you will just collect the data and then organize the data, describe the data, and then you can make some interpretations with regards to your data. So examples, the total number of statistics students weighing at least 50 kilograms. The university registrar cited statistics showing an increased number of students during the past five years. So in number two, you can or you may use a pie chart or a table to show the increase of the number of students and of course usually in your or in some uh, research we you always have the demographic profiles of your respondents so it will just give a short description or a description of your respondents so if there are lots of males or females or what grade levels or their pros, uh, professions or their incomes so you can just use these common tools to describe your data. It's either by using tables, using percentage, using graphs and figures. We have the pie chart, bar graph, and others. Or you may also solve some measures of centers, the mean, median, mode, and the measures of variability to know the dispersion or the variability of your data. So these are just some common tools for descriptive statistics. Now, the second area is the inferential statistics. So, this area concerned on, or the methods concerned with the analysis of a subset of data leading to a prediction, predictions or inferences about the entire, entire set of data. So, if, if we have a, an entire set of data and you just get a subset of it, whatever the decision or conclusion or generalization that you have made here at the smaller area of the subset, it can be used as a generalization for the whole set of data. So of course, if we have an example, if you want to, to compare two strategies or teaching strategies, so you may use inferential statistics, you may gather some data by just uh, doing two teaching strategies to students and then you compare their results by using some inferential statistical tools. Of course, if you want to compare two medicines and if you want to compare relationship between two variables or say, for example, in this example, the height of the father and the height of the son. So with inferential statistics, you can answer or you can make a generalization out of your data gathered. Now we have some common tools also for inferential statistics. 
the first tool is for the test for difference. Now that we have the t-test for two independent groups, so it is used to compare the means of two unrelated groups. And the purpose of this is to determine if the samples are different from each other. So example, the test, or if you want to test the effect of two different medicines to two different groups of respondents. Take note to two different groups of respondents. So if you have one group and another group, you will test this, you will uh, give something here and also here and then the result here of these two groups will be compared So these two are the two unrelated groups while in the second one the t-test for dependent samples It is used to compare sample means from the same respondent so only one group of respondents So the purpose of this is to determine if there is a change from one measurement to the other so usually we have the before and after or in during or in a classroom setting we have the pre-test and post-test so remember for two independent groups we have a t-test for two independent groups meaning we have two groups and then we compare the results of the two groups but for the p-test for dependent samples there is only one group but we will compare the before and after results and we also have the F-test or ANOVA if you want to compare their variances. Now we have this exercise. Determine whether the following uses T-test for independent samples or dependent samples. Number one, is there a difference about the patient's health before and after treatment? Of course, this is dependent. There is only one group of Patient. Number two, is low lofia more effective at reducing depression symptoms than deplo? Of course, we need two groups here to verify if lofia is really more effective. So this is independent samples. Number three, is there an improvement in reading scores after? Participating in the read like a pro course. So this is dependent okay, If you want to see some improvement, of course, you must have the same Respondent or the same group of respondents Number four do people recall more words after learning a memorization technique or strategy? So of course, this is still dependent only one group of respondents number two do students that take the SAT prep course score higher on the SAT than those that don't. Of course, here we have two groups, those that have taken the SAT prep course and those who, do, who did not take the SAT prep course. So two independent groups, so this is independent samples. Number six, do people perform better when given praise or punishment? So this is dependent samples. And number seven, is there a difference in how many miles a car can be driven when using a car, and when using an aircon versus having the windows down? So these only have one group of respondents, one group of cars. So this is dependent. So you'll just compare if the, the aircon is on while driving and the other one will be after that will be when the windows are down. And last, is there a difference in income based on gender? Okay, so we have unrelated groups here, the gender, of course, so this is independent. Okay, so again, independent samples, two different unrelated groups. Dependent samples, only one group of respondents. Now let's go to the second test or common tool for inferential statistics with the test for relationship we have the chi-square test so when you use chi-square chi test if you want to compare observed results versus expected results or if you want to examine the relationship between two categorical variables so say for example is gender related to the type of music so we have two categorical variables here 
So you have the gender and the type of music. So in this case, you'll just uh, distribute your respondents with regards to their gender and the type of music. Well, the second one, the Pearson Product Moment Coefficient of Correlation, or Pearson Correlation for short, it is used to examine the direction and relationship between two numerical variables. So you may use Pearson Correlation if you want to get some numerical variables on each of your respondents. So example, is there a relationship between the height of the father and the height of the son? So you will have two numerical variables here, the height of the father and the height of the son. So now let's have some exercise. So determine whether the following uses chi-square or Pearson correlation. Does there appear, <clears throat> does there appear to be a flavor preference for ice cream amongst kindergarten students. Of course, you don't need any numerical uh, variable here. So we have the flavor preference and the kindergarten students. So this is chi-square. Number two, so this is chi-square. Number two, what is the relationship between the height and age? You need two numerical variables. So this is Pearson. Number three, does the distribution of eye colors at AMCC differ from that of the general population? Of course, this is chi-square. You don't need any numerical variables. Is there a significant linear relationship between hours of exercise and weight? So these two are numerical, so this is Pearson. Number five, is there a relationship between English grades and mathematic grades? Of course, this is Pearson, two numerical variables. Is there an association between gender and color preference? So we have two categorical variables, so we have chi-square. Number seven, is grade level independent of school attendance? So we have the grade level and the attendance, so this is the Pearson correlation. So if it's absent, too much absence, or we have, we can, the absences, we can categorize the attendance of the students, and then with respect also to their grade level. Uh, so this is not Pearson. So this is chi square. And number eight is there a relationship between temperature and ice cream sales? Of course, we need two. Uh, numerical variable, so we have this as Pearson correlation. So again, two categorical variables, Pearson, two numerical variables. Now let's review some terminologies. So when we say population, it is the set of all possible values of the variable, or it refers to the entire group being studied. Okay, so say for example, during election, so the population, there are the total, the overall number of voters. So that is the population. Now, parameter, it is a value calculated or calculated using the data from the population. So examples are these three, the population mean, population variance, and the population standard deviation. Familiarize the notation. Now, a subset of the population, because it is sometimes or most of the time very difficult to get data from the population, we must have or we can get an information from its subset called the sample. So it is just a subset, so a smaller part of the population. So if this is your population, the samples are just some representative of the population. And of course... Okay, this is statistic. There's no S here. It is a value calculated using the data from the sample. So if it is from the population, it is parameter. If it is from the sample, it is statistic. So we have the sample versions. So we have the sample mean, the sample variance, and the sample standard deviation. So take note of these notations. Next, we have variables. These are the characteristics observed 
or measured on every unit of the universe. So we have two types of variables. We have the qualitative and the quantitative variables. So of course, when we say qualitative, these are variables that yield observations by which individuals can be categorized according to some characteristic or quality. So examples, gender, marital status, blood type, eye colors, and others. So when we go to quantitative variables, these provide information in which account or quantity, so it means number, is most important. And there are two types of quantitative variables, the discrete data or discrete variables and the continuous data or continuous variables. When we say discrete, these are whole numbers, but continuous if they are fractional or decimal. So let's have this last exercise for this presentation. So determine whether the following data are discrete or continuous. Number one, patients or number of patients in the ward. So this is discrete. Of course, you cannot say that there are 4.5 or 5.5 patients in the ward. No, whatever the size of the patient, it, he is still counted as one. Employee salary, of course, we talk about, we talk about money. So it is continuous. Number three, score in a multiple choice exam. So in general, multiple choice exam, this is a discrete uh, data. But I think some of the students said that their teachers are giving uh, 0.5 in a multiple choice exam. So that is new for me. For number four, number of students in a class. So this is a discrete. Again, this is the same with number one. So usually discrete, most of the data for discrete, we use the word the number of patients, the number of, the number of. So speed, this is continuous, just like 10.5 kilometers per hour, 11.3 uh, 11 meters per second. So this is continuous. Basketball players height. So we can have 1.8 meters. 1.9 meters so this is continuous number seven the amount of time to complete a project so time it can be decimal so continuous number eight heartbeats per minute so this is discrete according to google this is discrete land area this is continuous so we can have 240.5 uh, square meters or others this can be in decimal form and last students unit load per semester so this is discrete I have not seen any uh, student unit that is 0.5 or that has a decimal number so thank you for listening